I interpret the problem statement, so I'm dealing with a viscometer, and a viscometer is an instrument for measuring viscosity. So the sliding plate viscometer is used to measure the vis viscosity of a fluid. The top plate is moving 10 meters per second. So this plate up here, this top plate right here, is moving at 10 meters per second. And there's a force on this top plate of 3 newtons. So there's a force here to overcome the viscous drag. And the bottom plate is stationary. The goal is the viscosity of the fluid and we're told to assume a linear velocity distribution in this gap between the plates. In my situation diagram I show a force of 3 newtons on the top plate, a velocity of 10 meters per second on this top plate. I show that the bottom plate here is stationary. The gap is 1 millimeter and I capture my goal. The goal is the viscosity of the fluid in this region in units of Pascal seconds. When you see a stationary plate and a moving plate, think couette flow. Let me show you how this works. Here's the shear stress equation. Shear stress equals velocity times velocity gradient. Since the velocity gradient is a straight line, we can replace the derivative with a change in velocity over a change in distance. So this becomes viscosity, change in velocity over change in distance. The change in velocity is the velocity of the plate minus zero, the velocity at the wall here, and the change in distance is h. So this becomes mu times the velocity of the plate divided by the gap thickness h. So whenever you have couette flow, go ahead and instead of using the general equation relating shear stress and viscosity, use this equation right here. In the viscosity equation, let me do term by term analysis. This is the goal. This is the velocity of the plate. And this is known to be 10 meters per second. This is the gap thickness and this is known to be 0 0.001 meters. Notice the use of SI units. And if I can find an equation for shear stress I can now solve for the problem goal. Next I've drawn a free body diagram of the top plate. This is the applied force of 3 newtons acting on the top of the plate. On the bottom of the plate is the frictional or drag force of the fluid. This is the shear force and I get this by taking the shear stress in the fluid times the area of the plate. So since the sum of forces must equal zero on this plate I can write F is equal to tau A. Term by term analysis. There's the goal. This is known to be 3 newtons and the area of the plate is 0.1 meters by 0.05 meters. And so I can now solve for the goal. Let me make that 3 just a little bit better. So here's my plan of attack. I'll solve this equation for the shear stress. Once I know shear stress, I can come back and solve this equation for the problem goal, which is the viscosity of the fluid. Here's the calculation. The shear stress is 600 pascals, and calculating the viscosity with this equation gives a viscosity of 0 0.06 pascal seconds. Let's review the solution. The viscosity value, if you look in the tables, is very, very high. This is somewhere between the viscosity of water and the viscosity of glycerin. So we note that it's very high viscosity. When you have a moving plate and a stationary plate like this, think couette flow, and then the viscosity equation, which is here, simplifies to this expression here on the right. 
Very useful. A very useful skill when you're setting up a problem is to visualize. Let me show you how that works on this problem. So when I'm drawing my situation diagram, I try and imagine I'm looking at a real problem, not just a textbook problem. So I'll draw the plate to scale. Here's a top view of the moving plate. And so it's five centimeters in this dimension and 10 centimeters here. And I can quickly do a unit conversion and I can see that this is about two inches on this scale and four inches here. So I'm looking at something that's two inches by about four inches. And then if I draw the plates in a side view, the gap between the two plates is one millimeter, about a tenth of a centimeter. So these plates are very, very close indeed, and these are filled with a very viscous fluid. So this is what visualizing is. It's imagining the object as it would appear in the real world. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for listening.